Hi everybody, welcome back, hope you're all right. We have a MiFi device like this one. Uh, this is our Netgear M1 MiFi router, which we've been using a long time and it's lovely and it's fantastic. There is a problem with it in that we need to keep it charging up. Uh, I mean, it's got a very big and powerful battery, but it always runs out when you least expect it. And so what we have is we have this USB charging cable here, which is quite thick, and we've got nowhere to really plug it in and charge it. I know we've got USB uh, sockets on the lights, I know we've got USBs at the back of the caravan, I know we've got USBs all over the place, but actually to plug this into one of the lights, you end up with a cable dangling down just like this, and it looks a bit unsightly. Plus also there's nowhere to then put it. So what we've been doing is we've been plugging it into the lights, looping the cable through and placing it in the top cupboard here, which is fine, except you get this cable looping through. So my idea is to install a dedicated USB socket at the back of one of these cupboards so that you don't ever see it and, uh, and it can then be installed and maybe we could mount this vertically on the side of the caravan or in the cupboard so it's tucked up out of the way, it's a nice neat installation and we don't see cables dangling down. So to make this work there are some items that we're going to need to purchase and here they are. First of all, a USB socket, and this runs from 12 volts and has two USB outlets. It's designed to be mounted on a panel, so this is absolutely perfect for our needs. To fit it, we're gonna need a drill, and we need a 28 mil hole cutter and a small pilot drill. To wire it up, we need some lengths of cable, some scotch locks, and some spade crimp connectors. A shopping list and all the kits I've used here is in the description below. So this is where I'm going to mount the socket at the back of the cupboard next to the TV amplifier and the TV antenna. The cupboard also backs onto the radio and this is helpfully where I'm going to take my power from, the back of the radio. In fact behind the radio the power has already been split to feed the TV amplifier so this seems like a good place to add my scotch locks. So the first job is to remove the radio. Now I couldn't quite film this as I needed access to get the radio out but removing any radio is really easy. Simply insert the radio release keys down the side and pull the head unit out to reveal the cabling. And to make life easier, I'll unplug the head unit to get access to all the wiring in this void. As I mentioned, the TV amp takes its power from here, so I'm just going to add two scotch locks that create a T-junction for me to get power. These connectors simply crimp onto the wire, and we then have a spade connector that we can plug onto. These are exactly the same ones that I used for the fridge fan upgrade. Now before I arrived at the caravan, I made up this cable that will plug into the USB charger. So as you can see here, I'm cutting the cable to length, twisting the wires together using a drill, and this method makes untidy cables nice and neat and far easier to work with. Then I'm just adding the crimp connectors that came with the USB charger and one half of the crimp spade terminals, and that's it, the cable is ready. Back at the caravan, I've added the other half of the spade terminals and plugged in our new cable. And as you see, I'm testing with the voltmeter, the new cable to make sure that we have power and that this switches off when I turn the caravan master switch off. And indeed, it does. So the next job, the scary bit, is cutting the hole. So I'm placing some masking tape around the area that I want to drill, so I don't chew up the veneer or scratch the surface. Once happy with the location and checking no cables are in the way behind, I use my pilot drill to create the first hole. Once done, I'm swapping over to the 28mm hole cutter and making the final aperture. Taking it nice and easy and not pushing too hard, I did actually have a bit of an issue here, but more on that a bit later. Now it's time to feed through the new wires, not forgetting to add the retaining nut for the USB socket, which of course I did. I'm poking the cables through to connect onto the USB socket and connect it the correct way around. The socket is clearly marked, and as you can see, the socket is illuminating just fine. Now I'm gonna add this socket without the surround, but with the rubber cover, so it doesn't occupy too much space at the back of the cupboard. Adding the nut secures it to the cupboard, and yes, it is wonky, but I did adjust this later on once I saw it. Now it's just a case of refitting the radio and testing it and tidying up the mess that I've made. I'm mounting the MiFi on the outside wall with some Velcro strips, the very same ones I used from my awning light project. 
So you can see some cable management is in order here, I think. And I'm gonna buy a longer cable and route it around the edge of the cupboard. So, as you can see, the MiFi is charging. And the great thing is that when I flick the master switch on, our MiFi switch is on automatically. And I'm thinking I might even remove the battery from it so that when the master switch is off, the MiFi powers itself down. I'll let you know if this works later on. Right, and there we go. A very easy job to do. I'm gonna turn that off now and just wait for the caravan to moan that there's no power. Just wait for it. Um, so yes, easy job for you to do. I know that other channels have done this thing uh, of putting extra USB sockets in. I know I did it in a previous video, but nothing quite like this. And if anything else, I hope it just gives you the motivation and the confidence to go ahead and do this yourself. In terms of electrical safety, that radio is fused anyway. The TV amp is taken off of the back of that radio. So it's all very, very safe. It's all very well protected. If you really did feel the need to, that's the caravan telling me there's no power. If you really did need to, well, you could add an extra inline fuse as well. If you're going off grid a lot and you don't want that plug switched on all the time, you could add an extra switch. In fact, where'd I bloody well put it? I did actually buy a switch, one like that, if you can see it. Uh, I was considering putting a switch in next to it, uh, next to the USB socket, just in case, so I could switch it off if we were ever off grid. But the reality is this, we've already got a USB socket down on the front chest, which stays on all the time anyway. So I'm thinking we might as well just carry on and have that one on all the time whilst the caravan is switched on. I think it's going to be a handy thing for us to do. Certainly already, I know the Wi-Fi is enabled in the caravan and I don't see any cables hanging around. The other thing I can do is I can add some external antennas onto that MiFi as well to boost up the signal if I so need to. The crucial thing here is I'm trying to get away from the TV amplifier as much as I possibly can to stop any co-channel interference or any uh, cross-contamination or modulation from the MiFi to the TV antenna and vice versa. Um, which basically means you degrade the signal. So we'll, we'll be experimenting with that, no doubt, over the next couple of months or the next couple of trips, because uh, right now I don't know when we're going out again next. So there we go. I hope that gives you some inspiration and hopes that gives you some... Ah, lost my glasses. I hope it gives you some inspiration. I hope that gives you some... Um, confidence to go and give it a go yourself. I've put a list to all the kit I've used down below, talking of which... Don't buy this. Don't buy this at all, because that very nearly, um, as soon as the camera can focus, that very nearly didn't make it all the way through. In fact, I had to go through with a drill bit just at the end there to make sure it was gonna go all the way through and then finish off with it. Uh, because the recess is not as deep as the width of the um, cupboard. And as you can see in there, the, uh, the masking tape is bedded into the back of the cutter. So if I was you use an auger, um, anything like that, you know, woodworking will be perfectly fine. Uh, I didn't use that one because I've had bad experiences where they just grouch up and chew up all the external faces, uh, which is why I chose that, which was a wrong choice. So uh, I'll put a link to all the kit you need down below. That's going in the bin. And um, yes, I hope it's been useful for you. So until next time, guys, many thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you very soon. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon. If you do all that, well, we will see you again. Thanks for watching guys, take care now, bye bye.